In 2014, WECT celebrated 60 years on the air in the Cape Fear region. We have been the most watched television operation in southeastern North Carolina since we started. We believe that's because of our commitment to cover and serve this community. And what we've learned over the year is that viewers turn to WECT for weather coverage. The most vivid example of that happened around Independence Day with the arrival of Hurricane Arthur to the coast. We stayed on the air, online and on digital as the storm passed by the Carolina coast. The brunt of the strongest winds being felt on our coast and it's my pleasure to turn it over to our colleague uh, Colin Hackman uh, joining us from uh, Carolina Beach. Good work so far today, Colin. What's the latest where you are? Well, you know, again, we're under uh, we, just a few minutes ago. We had heavy rain here at the uh, north end of Carolina Beach and a lull in the precipitation, but no lull in the uh, sustained wind speeds here. It has continued to march up into the 40s, probably now sustained upper 40s. We have seen some gusts uh, occasionally uh, up in the upper 50s, likely here. I don't have an anemometer, uh, anemometer rather, right here with me, but we do have some strong winds that continue to cut right out of the north and northeast. You can see the big waves. Uh, we've had wave heights probably at 10 to 15 feet. As you move away from the Carolina Beach Pier, uh, those continue uh, to grow. This pier, as I mentioned earlier in today's broadcast, is no stranger to tropical systems. We were here for Tropical Storm Barrel. Uh, this pier had uh, originally been about 100 feet longer than what it was until Hurricane uh, Fran, uh, Bertha, and Bonnie in 96, uh, 98, and then Floyd in 99. You can see the strong surf now starting to move in. And one thing that has changed a little bit here over the course of the last half hour or so is how close the water is getting to the rock wall here. There's a lot of people out looking at the storm, watching uh, nature's wonder that have uh, been relaxed up to this point. But we have had a few downpours that have made things uh, a little bit more tense uh, here at the north edge of the Carolina Beach Pier. The folks, the bar is open, the pier is closed. So that gives you an idea of kind of the philosophy maybe of the eastern North Carolina lifestyle. A lot of people really interested in to see what will happen, maybe never have having had seen a tropical storm or tropical system. My best advice to you because of a couple things. One, you mentioned it, Gannon, the potential for some localized flooding, street flooding, uh, rain flooding inland and just off of the main shore here is going to be hazardous for drivers. And then the other thing, of course, is we don't want extra people out on the roadways. Public safety already uh, being taxed with the fact that it is a holiday weekend and resources are thin, plus the fact that we have all of this going on. Uh, make it better, much better for you to watch from the comfort of your home and leave uh, this to me. We're going to continue to report live out here throughout the uh, afternoon hours as uh, Arthur continues to make its way up the coast. Guys? All right. Thanks so much, Colin. WECT also made history in 2014 by becoming the only local television station to host a political debate featuring all three candidates for the U.S. Senate seat. This was one of the most watched races in the entire country. With only weeks to decide, viewers from across North Carolina watched our coverage of the candidates, Kay Hagan, Tom Tillis, and Sean Haw. Local, state, and national media camped out in our newsroom to cover this high-profile event. From WECT and the League of Women Voters of the Lower Cape Fear, this is a Decision 2014 special report. The U.S. Senatorial Forum. Here is your moderator, John Evans. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the WECT studio in Wilmington for this Decision 2014 special report. I'm John Evans of WECT TV. Along with the League of Women Voters of the Lower Cape Fear, we've brought together the three candidates running for U.S. Senate. Over the next hour, they're going to discuss the issues making headlines along with the other topics of this 2014 campaign. Justin Smith joins us now live to break down what the candidates had to say. Justin? Well, Fran, this was the third face-off between Democrat Kay Hagan and Republican Tom Tillis, but tonight you heard a new voice join the debate. The WECT League of Women Voters Forum gave Libertarian Sean Hall his first chance to stand shoulder to shoulder with the two leading Senate candidates wanting to represent you in the nation's capital, a place Hall believes has too much control in everything ranging from the economy to marriage. It is not my position to judge anyone for uh, who they love or how they want to love them, as long as it's between consenting adults. Uh, the, the, I, of course, I'm for gay marriage, and if you want to get married, Mazel tov, I wish you every happiness. Republican Tom Tillis differs from Hall on gay marriage, but agrees on shrinking the role of government. 
if the president and Senator Hagan have their way, they will, we will regulate ourselves out of a lot of beach access. You know, Senator Hagan supports the EPA's overreach, and it's become ridiculous. While Tillis criticized Hagan's work in Washington, she went after what he's done in Raleigh. Folks, do you know what his tax poli policy is doing? It's sending our teachers to Texas, our film jobs to Georgia, and our Medicaid dollars to 28 other states. Hagan left after the debate without talking to reporters who asked Hall if he appeals more to Democrats or Republicans. I think the divide is more between the political class and the real world. And I think that I uh, appealed more to people in their daily lives. And when it was Tillis's turn behind the mic, he repeated his claim that a vote for Hagan is a vote for the president. Senator Hagan's on the ballot this year, but so are President Obama's policy, she votes with them 96% of the time. Now, if you missed tonight's debate, you can watch it right now on our website, WECT.com. Reporting live, Justin Smith, WECT News. Well, you'll find investigative units in many larger markets. We committed to staffing and expanding a regular investigative unit in this smaller TV market. Our coverage of how local leaders spend taxpayer money uncovered several revelations involving a local community college president. The president used college money on plane ticket upgrades, among other things. We found he charged mileage for a vehicle he received for free from the university. In January, the college president resigned under pressure and is now suing the school. WCB's Ann McAdams investigates and Fran Cape Fear Community College President Dr. Ted Spring spent over $16,000 on his college issued charge card last year. Among the charges are airline seat upgrades, meals and a plane ticket for Spring's wife and alcohol. With a recent pay increase, Cape Fear Community College President Ted Spring now makes more than $268,000 each year. But as a representative for the college, he also gets a credit card for other expenses. For example, a $1,700 charge for President Spring and his wife Andrea to fly to a President's Academy conference in Sacramento this summer. It included their $1,300 base fare and $400 to upgrade their seats from coach to choice seating. Spring has also bought meals for his wife with college money, as well as wine while out to eat on multiple occasions. For other restaurant purchases, Dr. Spring simply turned in a duplicate charge card receipt instead of an itemized receipt, so we don't know what exactly he bought. A Ford Fusion like this one, provided to him by the college at no cost. Spring's only expense is gas, but he's being reimbursed 56 cents a mile, the IRS reimbursement rate that factors in wear and tear and depreciation. So Spring is essentially profiting about 40 cents a mile to drive this free vehicle. After our reports on the topic, the college said they were going to revise their reimbursement policy so that it would more closely align with Spring's actual out-of-pocket cost. We also found out for the first time today that Spring has been reimbursed for trips just a few blocks away from the college. Some of the trips are short. They're a mile, like round trip. Um, and some people think that that is... Is it necessary to fill out a form to get reimbursed for a mile? I'm not, I'm not sure what's on the reimbursement form at all. I don't fill them out. They're just filled out. I mean, I, if I go someplace, um, I list down where I'm supposed to be going according to the calendar, and someone else fills in the actual mileage for me. Do you, I mean, you are and, and, going. And, and I don't believe I've ever been reimbursed for a mile. Actually, like many times for trips to like the city club or trips to Thaley Hall. Oh, for lunch. Yeah, for lunch. Uh, yes. Okay. I, I didn't know that. Although Spring says someone else fills out his mileage logs, he does sign them. Besides short trips, Spring has also been reimbursed for trips to social functions and even birthday parties. Happening right now, trustees of Cape Fear Community College are still meeting behind closed doors. They have been that way for several hours. WECT's Ann McAdams is there and joins us now with what's being discussed. Ann? Fran and John, we have had a couple of people indicate to us that we need to stick around because stuff going on inside the meeting upstairs in Union Station right now could get interesting. Now, we're not sure what to make of that, but we do know that Cape Fear Community College has been mired in controversy 
four months. We have just learned that the president of Cape Fear Community College, Ted Springs, has resigned. Yes, so we uh, reported to you at the uh, top of our newscast that the trustees for Cape Fear Community College uh, went into closed session earlier this afternoon at a specially called meeting. Uh, Dr. Spring was not at the location downtown where they were meeting and literally just minutes ago we received a uh, text from uh, Ann McAdams downtown that Dr. Ted Spring has resigned as the president of Cape Fear Community College. New details tonight on a story that we first broke at 6. An interim president is leading Cape Fear Community College tonight. The former president now, Dr. Ted Spring, resigned just hours ago following our series of reports that uncovered how he was spending college money. The move follows several months of WECT investigative reports. They detailed how Dr. Spring had used college money to buy plane tickets for his wife, airline seat upgrades, even alcohol. We uncovered Dr. Spring received mileage reimbursements for a car he used for free from the college and did not pay to maintain. Dr. Spring returned the car weeks ago and also canceled his club membership that the college paid for. Dr. Spring did not break stride when we asked him for an interview minutes after the announcement that he'd be leaving the college effective immediately. Trustees met for hours in closed session before announcing they'd accepted the resignation. The Board of Trustees thanks Dr. Spring for his service and wishes him well in his future endeavors. And we wish him the best and there'll be further details to follow. Now the college trustees have named Dr. Amanda Lee as the interim president to succeed Ted Spring. She was most recently serving as vice president for instructional services. Our local county leaders also changed policies after our coverage of their high priced meals on the taxpayers dime. Now leaders are voluntarily abiding by a per diem policy they require county workers to follow. Friend, Chris Coudre is essentially the CEO of the county, so you might expect his expenses to be different from other employees, but in some cases, his purchasing patterns are very different. Tonight, a look at some of the pricey purchases he and some commissioners are making on your dime. New Hanover County leaders spent more than $10,000 on a trip to New Orleans. We recently told you about a trip in July where New Hanover County Manager Chris Coudre and three commissioners spent more than $10,000 attending a national conference in New Orleans. Just a few months earlier, Commissioners Tom Wolf and Jonathan Barfield went with Coudre to a similar conference in D.C. And once again, we uncovered receipts from restaurants listed as some of the most expensive in town. County records show the trio spent $259 the first night at Bobby Van Steakhouse on three ribeyes at $50 a pop, an appetizer, salads, and dessert. That works out to $86 a person, which is nearly double the county's $46 daily meal allowance for employee travel. Let's, um, let's separate between the county policy and who it applies to and who it does not. County travel policy and spending limits don't apply to Coudre or the commissioners. And that's why he, Wolf, and Barfield were able to go to the famous D.C. restaurant Georgia Browns the next night and drop another $260 of your money on their dinner. Our delegation invited two guests, and together the five split six entrees in addition to appetizers, sides, and dessert. The following night, Coudre and the commissioners charged another $262 at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, exceeding the county's per diem for ordinary employees on their filet mignons alone. Is it weird that the county commissioners and yourself and the county attorney and some of the other folks involved are not subject to these guidelines? I, I, I don't think that that's weird at all. For the D.C. conference, Coudre and Barfield stayed at the Washington Hilton. They have both told us that they typically choose their restaurants based on location. What we attempt to try and do is to stay relatively close to the hotel, to, to be quite honest. But some of the restaurants they chose are not that close. Bobby Van Steakhouse is 20 blocks or roughly two miles away from the hotel. Georgia Browns is a mile and a half from the hotel. A search on MapQuest shows Ruth's Chris Steakhouse is the only restaurant within easy walking distance of the conference. A search on Urban Spoon shows dozens of much less expensive restaurants closer to the hotel that could have saved taxpayers hundreds of dollars. Some county commissioners wanted to keep closer tabs on the $400,000 the Economic Development Commission spends each year recruiting businesses here. But the EDC may have other ideas. Listen to this recording from one of their recent board meetings. But I mean, if you look at WCT, they're all over the commission. That's, that's, why, we don't do it. that's why we don't do it. 
While keeping our commitment to breaking news and severe weather coverage, we believe strongly that we have a responsibility to serve our community as well. Each year, we collect fans for those who can't afford them during hot weather. We also collect toys and bikes through our Holiday Smiles Toy Drive and Weller's Wheels. Our bike drive produced a record number of donations, filling much of our newsroom. Fran, how's it going out there so far? Ashley, fantastic. We have already sold so many fans right now. We have two pallets full of fans that customers have come in and purchased. And of course, these fans will go to the elderly first and then others who need them. But we've got lots of fans over here that are still for sale. The average price of a fan, about $16.88. You can go a little bit higher or a little bit lower. But these are actually the perfect fans. Everyone always talks about how great they are and how seniors really appreciate them. We've got folks who are coming in and all you have to do as this lady is doing go to the register pay for a fan and then we will have one of our gentlemen helping us here put the fans on the pallet now we've got lots of folks out here right now who are buying fans I want to talk to this young lady though because we've got a lot of adults well we've got a young lady out here who has purchased a fan what's your name grace and what why are you donating because it's nice to help the people who can't afford fans We've been collecting toy donations for our annual Holiday Smiles uh -huh. Toys Drive and Weller's Wheels. Is that Fran there riding a bike? This year we've already received some really big donations. So that's what they do in the morning. They ride bikes on that morning <laughs> show when they're around here. Anyway, all of it is going to help give local children a brighter Christmas. WECT's Francis Weller live at the Walmart and Monkey Junction. People are stopping by, buying bikes or toys and joining our effort. Right, Fran? <laughs> That's right, John, and we had so much fun this morning. We're having fun this evening because within the past hour since I talked with you last, all of the bikes that you see right here have been sold. People have come by, purchased bikes for Weller's Wheels, and there's some folks even shopping right now for toys for our Holiday Smiles toy drive. And then we've got something unique right here. Sir, if I can ask you to step over right quick, I want to I wanna show, Mark, if you don't mind, this little goodie right here. That's a white BMW that has just been purchased by Pink Trash. All right, tell us why you did this. Um, we did this for you. Thank yeah, you so much. Course, I appreciate that. So um, I was actually uh, leaving the, the office, and, um, and Kelly had called uh, Chris um, and said, tell Jason to, uh, to get back to the office of Pink Trash immediately. Um, we need to go give uh, Miss Weller um, a gift for, for the children. So um, thanks to you for convincing us to get this, this lovely BMW, um, and it was your idea. So <laughs> we're more than happy to do it and provide things for you. Over the past few weeks, we've been collecting toys for our Holiday Smiles Toy Drive and Weller's Wheels. Today, officials from the Salvation Army came to pick up those toys and bikes that packed our studio for a couple of weeks. Thanks to all of you, our wonderful viewers who made donations to our bike drive and our toy drive. And this year is actually a record year for our bikes. We collected more bikes this year than any other year before. The Salvation Army will serve more than 1,400 families this holiday season. So we cannot say thank you enough for all of the toys and bikes. And oh, what a special Christmas it's going to be for some local kids in our area. 2014 was a year of celebration. 60 years on the air and 60 years in this community. We believe this past year was one of our most successful yet and worthy of your consideration for outstanding news operation. Thank you for watching.